So I will admit, new is scary. Whether you are brand new to YouTube or you're a YouTube pro, I know that when I was diving into my journey, I there were so many question marks in my head. Where do I even start? Who's gonna help me with the process? Where do I find an editor? Can I really take all of this on myself? Well, the answer was no, and I ended up hiring a team to help with putting the production of our YouTube channel into place, and it's been thebomb.com. But what it really comes down to is when there are new and scary things in your business, having a system and a process to follow makes it so much easier. Hey guys, Christy here from The Silver Life, and today I am so excited to go through our exact YouTube process in ClickUp. One of the most intriguing topics for people when it comes to ClickUp is content systems. At least in the beginning, as you're diving in, content systems are something that's super fun to create and really maintain and really get the feel of ClickUp. So let's dive in to our YouTube workflow in ClickUp. Okay, so let's walk through the YouTube workflow template. This is honestly one of my faves, the actual process we use to get our workflows into publication and let's dive in. Okay, so going through the statuses of this template. Now you can change these around, but what we have is to do and complete. Those are for all of the subtasks that we have here, right? Because we don't want a task to be in queue and then to go to publish because that doesn't really make sense for a subtask. Now this is a question I've gotten before because our other content templates like email marketing or blog or Instagram, because they don't have these subtasks and the task, we kind of use statuses as like, okay, what do I have to do next? The not started status is to create and the last status for like email would be sent or blog would be published. But because YouTube is so robust and we have multiple pe different people involved, we do want to have all these subtasks here and we want the status for that subtask to make sense. So another thing I want to mention here is when you have all these statuses, but your subtasks are really only using to do and complete, then I always just direct my team members. Once they're done doing their role, you can just actually mark this check mark here and it's going to go to that complete status. Okay. So, the statuses we have here are Q, meaning this is uh, videos that we are going to put into production, but we haven't started developing them yet at all. But we can put them on the calendar or even just put them in Q, like, okay, we're going to make this, we just don't have a plan for it yet. Move it into scripting when you start really developing it, writing the script, bringing in those assets. After you create the script and the topic for the video, it then goes into ready to film where you're waiting for you to film. After you film it, you can put it in filmed. Editing, we put it in here when it actually gets sent to the editor. Ready to schedule is when the whole video has been edited, it's good to go, the SEO is done and it's ready to schedule. Scheduled is uh, obviously it's been scheduled in YouTube and published is when the video has been published. So the actual main parent task is going to go along these statuses, the active and done, whereas the subtasks here are only ever going to hit to do and complete. Now, if you wanted to add another status that was like in progress, or anything like that for these subtasks, you can also feel free to do that. This is just how we personally uh, set up this template and run ours. So then let's talk about the actual subtasks here. So what we have here is our process of how we go through bringing a video into production. So solidify the topic and script, film videos, upload them to Dropbox. You can see the process here laid out. Now, what are these here? These are dependencies. Now, I recommend using dependencies when things are a team effort. If something isn't a team effort, you don't totally need them because it's more for, say I went to go ahead and it's my turn to review the draft too, right? 
Well, if I go to mark this as complete, it's gonna say, hold on, you're waiting on create draft two. That hasn't been done yet. So you actually can't do your part. So that's the beauty of dependencies is you are able to see what's blocking or what you're waiting on, check in with that person or just know that you can't do your job yet. And as soon as the person ahead of you checks off their task, you're then gonna get a notification in your notification settings saying, hey, your dependency has been unblocked. You are able to do your job now. So you can also see, I don't have this in the YouTube workflow, but you can see in Gantt view, it's really nice to be able to see how these dependencies all work together. You can see that not every single thing is dependent on each other. So create thumbnail, you really don't, that's not dependent on complete video SEO, but instead that's dependent on uploading the video to Dropbox. So you have the video content to create that thumbnail. So you can see this here, you can also move these and it would shift everything over. So if you click show reschedule dependencies, you can drag these and everything will move accordingly. So I'm gonna delete this Gantt view, I just wanted to show you how to do that. Um, okay, so that is that. We also have mapped out, this is about a three week timeline for creating a video from solidifying the topic and script to actually publishing the video. Your timeline might be different if you are doing this all on your own. Um, it could be longer, shorter, whatever it may be. This just gives ample time for things to get done because YouTube is a beast in its own. Um, so getting a video into production takes a lot of time and a lot of different things involved. So you can see we use start and due dates, put them on certain subtasks, and then you'll see this task calendar here is where we are actually seeing, okay, what is on the calendar for these? So you see the main video here, this is where it's being put into production. So from July 4th until the 25th, You'll see, you can see the start and due dates of the draft creation and the different things here. So you'll also see assignees when they are on there. You can see dependencies. And then also we added the parent task name. So once there are multiple videos being produced, you can see what's being worked on when. So let's also talk about the custom fields that we have here. So we have the columns, assignee, start date, due date, comments, those are standard. Then we have publish date as a custom field because due date of task and publish date might be different. We do have the due date here as the date is actually gonna be published, but you could also use this as when is this video being produced? Then we have linked docs. So this is for SEO purposes, which I'll show you that in a second and then film date. So some people might want film date, some people might not. If you don't, you can go ahead and just delete this. But I just like knowing the day that I filmed this. Video folder. So we actually store all of our YouTube content in Dropbox. So what we do here is I actually click on Dropbox and then I will click on the video. So I'll just click on this one here, click choose. And then every time that I uh, we need to reference anything for this video, that's right here, easy link in here. So, and then you can also X that out within here itself. And you'll see then it's gone. And then just a note text block in case you wanna put any notes. Um, excited about this one. This needs extra editing or anything like that. You can also use notes in the comment section. Um, so feel free to keep or leave this one depending on how you wanna use it. Okay, so those are the custom fields and column on the outside of the task. When we click inside the task, you can see this grid that we've created in this task template. So we have topic slash CTA. This is all gonna be filled out during scripting 
besides the uh, timestamps would be after it's filmed. So the topic and CTA, so what are you actually promoting this video? What do you wanna call people to action? Are you promoting a freebie, your course, your services? And then a place to write the intro, body, and outro of the script. So when you're actually filming this, you just open up this task and you can read right off of it itself. And then timestamps. So this is how we add things for our editor. So say in the beginning of the video at um, 57 seconds, we wanted to add um, the ClickUp 101 guide freebie image. Then we would put that here. Then we have this for our editor to reference anything that we specifically want added to that video. So that's in the description of the task. You can also add SEO information to the task description if you want. We choose to keep it in doc form so it's not cluttering this too much. We can have all our SEO in one place, but you can choose to add that to this description as well. And then you can see the other empty fields here we have, which are gonna be um, analytics, which you'll see in a second. And then again, just seeing the subtask here and then the doc. Okay, so that's inside the task description. I already showed you the task calendar, which is showing the actual task to bring these videos to production. Then we have the publish calendar. So this is actually not showing certain due date. You'll see if I turned this on, then it would show those, right? But we think that's a little bit cluttering. We just wanna see a publish calendar, so we turned on this publish date. You can also create a filming calendar if you want. And this shows publish date of, uh, okay, here are the different videos that are going out. It's color coded by status to know exactly where this video is along the production pipeline. And then we have analytics. So this is the status is published. So then these will all show up blank and then you can come in here and fill in these analytics to track which videos are doing well. Now we have an automation in here that when the status changes to publish, published, it creates a task in our marketing tasks checklist to gather analytics for a YouTube video and then the task name 30 days after the trigger date and then it's assigned to our team member so that we are gathering analytics third, the first 30 days of analytics after that video has gone uh, live. So that's the analytics tab. You can see all of these different custom fields here and grab those analytics. And then you can also like sort them to say, okay, I actually wanna see which video is performing the best. Um, and then you can like check out the SEO, whatever you wanna do in here. You could also do that in YouTube itself, but it's cool to have it in here as these data points. And then lastly, SEO docs. So this is where you can have a template where you are managing, tracking those tags, putting it into a tag paragraph to easily copy and paste into that tag spot in YouTube, and then the description. And we have a description template that we use for Dissolve Life where we just copy and paste and then we change anything um, that we need to for that video specifically. So we'll have placeholders for things like insert description here, any important links or things like that. So that is a walkthrough. And then so you'll see we link it to the task so that you can easily pull it up when you're going and doing that SEO and then uploading the video as well. So that's a walkthrough of our YouTube workflow. Again, this is one of my favorite templates. It's definitely a little bit more robust because it is a more robust content process, but I hope this helps you get a better understanding of how to optimize this process in ClickUp. One other thing I wanted to mention was there's another automation here that when the due date arrives and the status is scheduled, because we have that main due date on the parent task, um, being the due date of the video, then it changes the status to published automatically. We don't have to go in and change that status. So that is it for the YouTube workflow. So I hope that video was helpful for you in knowing how you can organize your YouTube process in ClickUp and make sure everyone is on the same page. Now, this is, yes, our exact template that we actually use for managing our YouTube and 
great news we actually have this available in our shop so make sure to link it in the description below it is also a part of our brand new content calendar bundle with all the amazing platforms that you can think of and each workflow that's specific for that platform so i'll link that in the description as well in case you're interested in checking that out but if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel with that thank you so much for watching and being here we so appreciate it and i'll see you next time